it's like a nine to five job for me. Yeah. It's like I have to get up, I have to go there, I have to come back, I have to, and like it's more of a lifestyle kind of thing. So I know I can't mess about outside the ring. It's like boxing and like I'm basically married to boxing, basically. Yeah. Push, 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 push. Hands are poster boy Ahmed. What's up lovely people, welcome back to another video right here on Entrepreneur Podcast Club coming live and direct from Fearless Boxing Gym right here in Warsaw. Today we've got another very special guest for you but before I introduce him, let me just give a big shout out to all our sponsors. So shout out to clickinspect.co.uk and My Straight Talking Academy as well. If you enter my EPC 10 off on My Straight Talking Academy, you all get 10% off. So without further ado, let's go straight to the interview. So ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for a very special guest, Hamza Posterboy Ahmed. <laughs> Welcome to the show first and foremost. Thank you. And thank you very much for your time. Yep. So do you just want to tell the viewers a bit about yourself, where you're from and what you do as well? Yeah man, so my name's uh, Hamza Ahmed. Been boxing for about 10 years now, started when I was 12 years old. Uh, just turned professional recently, uh, start of October, and yeah, man, boxing the amateurs, boxed at all levels in the amateurs, and yeah, uh, that's it, man. Um, okay. Just a boxer, man. <laughs> so many congratulations on you signing Thank professional. You. Thank you. So you said you trained for 12 years, 10 years, sorry. Yeah. So what got you into boxing? So what got me into boxing? Um, I don't know. I was like a really naughty kid back in the day, so I used to always fight and stuff. I used to always get into trouble. And we used to always have this thing when we, when we used to grow up um, back in the school. Uh, we used to always like think like who's the hardest in the year. I know it sounds really immature, but we used to have <laughs> yeah. like who's the hardest in the year. And then um, I don't know when I used to always fight, always be a naughty kid, always get into trouble, always get suspended. Um, so I just started fighting a lot. And then um, one of the days, my mate he goes to me. He goes, "Yo, should we, we should go around uh, the boxing gym." And he was, uh, and obviously like it got to a level where. It was my school versus a different school versus a different school. Who's the who's the <laughs> macho man kind of thing? Yeah. Um, so we just started going to a, 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 a club uh, called Plek Boxing Club. It was about a five minute walk from my house, um, and I just I just started boxing there. Uh, it was it was re really um, really rough and rugged. Uh, then I reached the Paddison and stuff, and we saw, we saw, obviously go there. The first day I went there, they put me in sparring. Uh, there's a big strong Afghan, he had about 10 kilos heavier than me, he's come, he's hit me with a body shot, boom, left hook, I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> uh, he's hit me with a left hook, uh, I've gone down, I've got back up, I've kept on fighting. Um, and a lot of kids, they, they stop the first day they, they come, and obviously if something like traumatic like that ha like happens to you, you're obviously going to stop. Um, but I fell in love with it, man, I just fell in love with sports. That, that was my first day, and since then I ain't stopped, man, I just fell in love with it basically, and yeah. yeah. Oh wow, that's really good. So in terms of your first amateur fight, how long ago was that since when you started the gym 10 years ago? Yeah. How long was it afterwards until you had your first amateur fight? So I started in September and I, I progressed really fast because there was another uh, coach there, his name is Siraj Udin, and he used to train his kid there and stuff. And obviously like we were ethnic minority in the, in the gym. So he seen how good I was, he seen, he seen how like, dedicated I was. He started taking me on the pads and it was only a little thing, like he just started taking me on the pads and stuff like that. Uh, but obviously with his knowledge, I progressed. And like he's like a mentor, he's like a father figure to me. And then I, I progressed really fast and within three months I had my first fight. Uh, won my first fight and then obviously I had my second fight in February. Uh, they flew us out to Ireland, uh, won by stoppage. I was the only lad from the club to win, by, to win uh, against Ireland because we were fighting in St. Patrick's Day on St. Patrick's Day and obviously they were, they were very hostile to, to the English and stuff and a lot of decisions went the other way so I knew I had to stop my opponent. Um, mm. So obviously I've, I've gone and fought the kid, boom, punched him, stopped him and yeah, Alhamdulillah I got the decision, man. Wow, so, yeah. congratulations. Thank you, man. So what was it like having your first amateur fight, walking into the ring, matchy fighting? I'll be honest with you, like um, six weeks before the fight I was on the toilet, just thinking <laughs> about it. Um, I don't know, man. It's like a, a really traumatic experience. I'd say um, it's really like nerve-wracking. Um, even with everybody, like everybody will tell you, yeah, like when you when you go to bed, you think, okay, how am I going to do this? What if I do this? What if I do that? Uh, what what if I lose? What if I win? How will I win? And like all the fighters will tell you, like when they, when they, when they when they go to bed, that's the last thing they think about. When they wake up, that's the first thing they think about. Mm. And that's what it, that's what it is, man. Like. 
it's just having that adren adrenaline rush um, yeah. when you know you've got a fight coming up. So how do you get prepared? You're in the changing room, you're fighting 30 minutes. Yeah. How do you psych yourself up? Yeah, so um, what I used to do, a, a really good tactic I used to say to my coach is um, obviously, so, 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 so we've done all the preparation, we've trained, we've gone in the changing room and like, I'm jelly legs. I've, I've got butterflies in my stomach, I'm jelly legs. I'm, I'm thinking, yo, how, how am I going to do this? It's like, like, what's the outcome going to be? Then I said to my coach, get, get in my head. And he'll just get into my head. I'm saying, when I, when I mean get, get into my head, he'll get into my head. He'll say to me, you know what? Why have you trained for? He's got two arms. He's got two legs. You've got two arms, two legs. But you know you've trained harder than him. And then it's like, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? Like, why, why are you doing this? And just that, just that thought, like, why am I actually doing this? Why am I putting my body my, and my head through this? Like, why am I actually doing it? And then through that, I just overcome it all. Okay. So, wow. Yeah, yeah I, I could only imagine the sort of butterflies that you get yeah. walking into the ring with all these people staring at you. So how was it like once you got signed to professional, you had your first professional bout, a lot bigger crowd. How did you manage that? Yeah, so um, I've just recently turned professional. Um, I've, not, I've not actually had my first fight yet, so I've had all the brain scans, stuff like that, all the training and stuff, and I'm basically ready. I'm in shape. Yeah. Um, I've been training for what, God knows how long. And yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready to go. Uh, but I've not had my first professional fight, but I've had 60 plus amateur fights. Wow. Boxed in national finals, boxed against European champions, Commonwealth champions, uh, boxed for Team England. So I've, I've been there wow. and done it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Wow, well, that, that is really good. You had 60 amateur fights. Yeah. So where about did you fight? Is it all over UK, Europe, Asia, America? <laughs> yeah, so it was all over, it was, it was all over England. So I've, I've boxed from down south, London sides, Bridlington, up Newcastle, up Burtley, um, literally everywhere, Manchester, and every, literally every big city you, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can name, I've actually fought there. Wow. Um, so yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned you had your scan, your brain scan and everything. So does that happen before every single professional fight? Uh, that happens yearly. Um, so that happens yearly uh, when, when you sign professional basically. So every year you've got to go, go book your brain scan and get your medical and everything sorted. So that happens yearly. In the amateurs it's pretty different. Uh, yearly we get obviously, it's not to the extent of getting a brain scan, but obviously you see a doctor, see if you're fit to fight, stuff like that, and that's how the amateur and professional license like kind of kind of differs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because boxing, I mean, we've all seen the if you don't box properly and you fight in a someone who's a bit dangerous, they hit you somewhere, it can be life changing. Yeah, hundred percent. So, yeah. how have you dealt with that? Like, if something was to happen to you, hopefully it doesn't, but yeah. you know. How would you deal with that? And that uh, so obviously, I've, obviously I started boxing back in year seven, and um, obviously I was still in school and stuff. And I thought to myself, like I'm getting like hit, hit a lot to the head. I'm thinking to myself, you know what? It can't be good for me. Like it can't be good for my learning. Uh, but then Alhamdulillah, I come out with the best grades in the school. Yeah. Uh, was was boxing. So I yeah. thought to myself, you know what? It can't be that bad. Or I must be too slick. I'm not getting hit. <laughs> so that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> So when you was in school, how did you manage doing your GCSEs and boxing at the same time? Yeah, so it was pretty intense. Obviously, wake up, waking up at half seven, seven o'clock, uh, getting ready for school, going to school, coming back, fueling up, going straight to training, then obviously trying to get some revision in. Um, honestly, if I look back at it now, I honestly don't know how I done it. <laughs> um, yeah. it, was, it, it was hard, but I'd say time management, and I'd say because I was boxing, I kind of I kinda knew the discipline, mm. obviously, like a lot of people think, you know, boxing is just fighting each other, getting points in their head, stuff like that. But it teaches discipline, it teaches hard work, it teaches a good work ethic, stuff like that. And um, from boxing, it kind of like molds me into a complete person. So in terms of after school, did you go to college? And what college did you go to and what did you study? Yeah, so after school, uh, I went straight and done my A-levels because um, obviously I was really academic. I really, mm. like even though I was a naughty kid at school, I really love like learning stuff like that, and mm. um, one of my sponsors, uh, Uncle Armud, uh, his late father, he he, he, got, he he spoke to me and he goes to me. Um, he said to me, he goes, you know what? You can have everything, but one thing they can't take away from you is that piece of paper, that education, and I kind of that kind of hit me, and may Allah bless him. Like obviously he just passed yeah. away, but. He, that kind of hit me and like motivated me more. You know what? I can do it, man. Like they can't take my education away from me. So, you know, 
they can take everything away from you, but they can't take education away from you. Yeah. And that's kind of why I kept on studying and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think with what you're saying, it's 100% true. Because with my family as well, because both come from Asian backgrounds, Backgrounds, exactly. it's like, yeah, they can't take that piece of paper away, yeah, which exactly. is 100% true. Exactly. Yeah. So in terms of, you know, because come from Asian background, like myself, the parents always say, yeah, yeah, study, go college, go union, this and that and the other. So how did you get your parents on board with you going to going into boxing as opposed to finishing your education, getting a degree? I'd say obviously the first thing was to make my parents happy and they kind of saw the love I had for boxing. So like whenever like me and my dad, um, we used to we obviously we used to get like have little fallouts and stuff. Uh, he used to hide my boxing gloves um, <laughs> away from me. Yeah. And he's like, you can't go boxing. So then I kind of like find my boxing gloves and I still go kind of thing because that's how much love I had for the sport. And he kind of realised that after a bit and he knew he couldn't stop me from boxing. Mm. And to be fair, because of the boxing, because, because of the work ethic I put into boxing, I'd actually did really well in my GCSE. So I'd, I didn't get lower than a B in any exam. Wow. And then for my A-levels, I got, I got AAB. Not and then obviously sure. went to university, got a 2-1 degree, so my, uh, my education was basically complete. And my yeah. dad said to me, you know what, like, like you've done it now, just do whatever you want now. Wow, mashallah, that is really good. Yeah. So in terms of your degree, what is your degree that you uh, got to So I went to Aston University, I studied sociology and social policy. And people ask me, like, why did you study that? Honestly, because I just enjoyed sociology and social policy. I just yeah. literally enjoyed the subject, <laughs> even for my yeah. A-levels. Um, obviously I did history, sociology and I did drama mm. and a lot of people say Asian guy doing drama, what are you doing drama for? Yeah. Um, but it's only because I enjoyed it and it's kind of got me more confident and basically built on my life skills and I'd say the, the two years that I spent in sixth form it was, it was the two years I, I, I was like the two best years of my life mm, because absolutely. I enjoyed everything I did like people say to me why are you doing boxing now you might as well, obviously you got your degree stuff like that just go, just go do your degree go, go, work, go work a normal job but it's because I love, I love boxing, like I want to live up, I want to li- wake up and live in the morning, live my life with something I enjoy. I don't want to be, mm, you know, kind 100%, of... 100%, yeah, fantastic. So in terms of your day-to-day routine, what is a typical day for you like as a professional boxer? Yeah, so I'd wake up in the morning, watch what I'm eating. So obviously, bless my mom, she makes my breakfast. So I'm having boiled eggs, turkey rations, green tea, having all my supplements, thanks to Zuf. Um, having my morning supplements, um, yamming them all down, then going straight to Mannings, um, get some work. Big up yeah. Mannings. Big up Mannings. Uh, going straight to Anthony in Birmingham, uh, obviously getting my, get, get my, get, get my session done there. Uh, straight after that, finish, finish from there, pray on the Mars, uh, go uh, have a little coffee or something, go to Costa, have a little coffee, come straight back, pick my dad up from work, pray on the Mars, go straight back to this gym fearless. I have a little session here, and that's it, man. And that's my day. Then go, then go to bed. That's my day, man. Wow. That's my day. Yeah. That's very structured. Yeah, very structured. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's what that's what that's what life is about. It's about having the structure, having the schedule. And once you have that schedule, once you have that structure, that's how you're gonna mm. kind of be disciplined. And that discipline's all that, that's the only thing that's gonna take you far. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So, do you still, as a professional boxer, like you see all these professional boxers like Mike Tyson back in the days? show videos of him doing sprints while jogging in the morning. Yeah. Is that part of your schedule as well? Yeah, so uh, my runs, I usually run on the treadmill. It's, and that's only because to get my heart rate up. I know I don't want to be in that comfort zone of running on the street, kind of mm. running at my own pace. I want to be running that's to, to, to something where I'm, I'm at my comfort zone. So let's, so let's say, let's give you an example. Um, Let's say if, I'm, if, if, you're, if you're shadow boxing, the shadow boxing, boom, nothing's hitting your back. A bag don't hit back, so you're just hitting the bag, nothing's hitting your back. You, 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 you're comfortable, you're at your own pace. But say if I put you in the ring, you're sparring. You're not comfortable because something's hitting you back. Mm. So that's why what, that's what I see my running. I don't want to be comfortable. I want to be, you know, intense, pushing, yeah. pushing, pushing kind of thing. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So going back to your diet, does your mum weigh up all your food for you? Yes, yeah, so my mum, so I bought some scales. Um, my mum weighs up all my food. She basically grills all my chicken, um, bo- boils my eggs, kind of, um, literally every, everything she does for me for when it comes to my nutrition and stuff like that. I kind of, so basically just weekly, I'd go to the butcher's kind of thing, get my food, uh, get my chicken, and uh, yeah, mum will just literally cook it up on the week. 
uh, every day and whenever I need it, boom, just jam it in, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the best way. That is the best way. Um, so you want to tell a story about your when you was in school? Yeah, obviously. So um, I was in school and obviously it was, it was hard for me to balance everything. So obviously I was fighting, stuff like that, uh, going sparring all around the country. Um, obviously coming back, training, stuff like that. So it was pretty intense for me. Um, but I used to always stick to my prayers um, because I don't know when I, was, when I was a kid, obviously all my teachers used to always say to me, and my dad used to say to me, he said, listen, uh, Salah is the key to, to success. Um, so obviously like it would, it would, it would like be lunchtime and stuff and it'd be about half 12, 12.45 and that 15, 20 minutes extra, I just like literally go to, go to the prayer room or go to the, uh, go to the, go to the drama studio where we used to pray and I used to pray. And then I used to come out and I used to see everyone else like having fun kind of thing. And um, I, I was always told, listen, you got to have sober and stuff. Mm. Um, and sober is, 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 a, is, a, is a main key in our belief. Um, so what happened was I used to always see, I used to think to myself, why am I, like, kind of, kind of, why am I praying? Why am I, why am I doing all this? Like everyone's having fun and stuff. We've got the same teachers and stuff like that. They're, they're doing pretty good. So why, why am I praying kind of thing? Um, but you know what? I still, you know, I just leave it like it's like it's it's a forest, so I'm able to do it. Mm. Um, and then results day came, and like honestly, like when I say to you, like my my whole life experiences is like Salah is the key to success. To success. Um, my whole my, my whole my whole life will tell you that. So it came to results day, and obviously I seen everybody offering their results, and there was all everyone was frowning. Everyone was frowning. So I thought to myself, I wasn't going to do too good. I opened up my results and. Um, it was it was the best thing ever. I got AAB from from a kid that's obviously boxing every single day, going hardly having time to study and stuff. And I basically say it was muscle that that mm-hmm. got me that. Like I, I, I was that kid that I'd be I'd miss school. I'd be in ch- boxing in championships in like Sheffield. The whole thing would be streamed. I'd have all the kids in the in the computer rooms watching me kind of thing. I was I was that type of kid at school. Yeah. And to obviously see them results uh, on that day I thought to myself, subhanAllah like yeah. Salah is actually the key to success. So yeah. MashaAllah. Many congratulations on Thank your you. results and your degree and your A you. level results. So when you say the kids are watching you on the computer, did you used to take off days from school to go? Yeah to basically fight? Yeah. yeah. So I said like when I was saying my life's like really hectic, I used to I used to have a very busy schedule. I used to take off days just to fight, just to compete in tournaments. Obviously, come back and then straight back into learning. Yeah. No rest, kind of thing. And obviously, boxing does take a lot out of you. It takes a lot out of your uh, physical and mental health. So yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. So how did the kids react to you? You know, when you were saying at school, it's like he was the toughest one. Yeah. Did anyone ever try to start fighting with you from the year group? And stuff yeah, like I'd say like kind of because I was kind of. Uh, the, the the cool kid, the mm. popular kid at school. Obviously, everyone would try like being like, you know what? He's like kind of like kind of, mm. you know what? We can try it with him. He won't do anything to us, kind of thing. And I used to always get into fights, like, like even saying that, even though even though I was a good, I was a good student and stuff. I used to always like let my ego get in front of me, and I, I think I got suspended about thirteen times from school. I was really close to get kicked out, but wow. yeah, thirteen times suspended from school, man. How did your parents react to, react to that? It was kind of. They kind of knew that macho character I had, um, but my parents, yeah, man, they obviously they, they, they was never happy. But I used to always say like that kid started me first, kind of thing. So yeah, yeah, because yeah, growing up in Asian household myself as well, because Asian parents tend to be a lot more strict. Exactly. Yeah. So going back to your amateur days, who was your toughest opponent? Would you say? Oh, I couldn't name a toughest opponent, but I'd say it was all to do with preparation. So the opponent was only tough if I didn't prepare properly. But if I prepare properly, then obviously I knew the opponent wasn't tough. So it was all down to me. Like it's you versus you at the end of the day. Yeah, like you can sense. only beat yourself. You know what I mean? So that's what I say. Yeah. I say my, my toughest opponent was myself. <laughs> <laughs> and in terms of you got signed professionally in yeah. October, um, how did the company that signed you come across you? Yes. Yeah, so obviously I kind of travelled down south, up north trying to look for a professional gym and stuff. Um, and then obviously I, was, obviously I was still boxing and stuff and obviously I was, you know, just doing my thing. And then uh, in my last fight, uh, in my la- like, what, like one of my last amateur fights, uh, there, was, there was a guy called Anthony Manning who was my manager and my coach now. Uh, obviously he kind of watched me uh, box and stuff and he saw something in me and he's got very good links with my amateur coaches. 
and obviously we went so we did a trial week down his gym he kind of I liked the way that he, he, he taught me, it was all one-to-one -one kind of thing, it was all like, you know what, you're doing this wrong And I felt like a beginner, I'll be honest with you, I felt like a beginner mm. It's like, I've done 10 years of boxing, like, how is a guy telling me that my stance isn't right? How is a guy telling me that I'm not punching properly? And I kind of fell in love with it, like the first two days, all he did was make me shadow box And every boxer, they want to hit, hit pads, look flashy And he was basically taking me back to the basics So I thought to myself, like, you know this guy? He's, he's actually a good coach because he's kind of teaching me the fundamentals and yeah so I thought to myself you know what my, my, my heart was saying you know what Anthony's the guy and he's the man he's the man yeah. so yeah so he's my manager and he's my coach now okay uh, training with him five times a week uh, Monday to Friday uh, one to one and yeah okay and in terms of the company that signed you what is the name of that company so obviously I'm just I've signed with Mannings, uh, that's his, 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 obviously his, his management company and um, obviously get, have a couple of first, have, have first uh, pro fights, learning fights and then hopefully get a promotional deal, that's the plan basically. Yeah. Okay, so what is the process from going from amateur to get inside professionally? What is the full end to end process? Uh, I'd say there isn't much of a process, it's just like if your heart's in the game, if you know if, that, if that's what you want to do then you'll just go up and do it and like it's like a nine to five jump for me. Yeah. It's like I have to get up, I have to go there, I have to come back, I have to, and like it's more of a lifestyle kind of thing. So I know I can't mess about outside the ring. It's like boxing and like I'm basically married to boxing basically. Yeah. As soon as I signed that professional contract, like yeah. that was my Nicar papers, I kind of <laughs> signed myself to boxing. 100%. So, in terms of how do you f um, finance yourself? Whilst you're boxing? Yeah, so obviously, um, with the support of obviously my parents, with the support of sponsors, so obviously my sponsors, I won international, one of my first sponsors sponsored me when I was 17 years old. Yeah. Literally come on board. Omens Travel, Icky from Omens Travel obviously helps me throughout my day to day life, everything. Uh, Mo from Eminence, he helps me. Knightswood Solicitors, uh, Kurum, he's obviously helped me through. Uh, through my amateur days and uh, a new sponsor of uh, who has come on board um, no label sports and entertainment a uh, rob he's from london mm. and uh, he's basically supporting me as well so just people that are on the journey people that see potential in you they kind of come on the journey support you and yeah yeah okay shout out to all the sponsors shout out. that Hamza just mentioned so how did your last sponsor come across you yeah so my last sponsor obviously like kind of you know when you're in this kind of circle, like with entrepreneurs and stuff like that, they kind of mention like, yeah, we're sponsoring this boxer kind of thing. And obviously like they come and approach you like kind of thing, like, and, and obviously building yourself on social media, building yourself, building a character on social media, people just start, start approaching you and stuff and they see the good work you're putting in and you know, why not get on board? Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of your social media, do you have somebody managing your profile? Or do yes. you do all yourself? Uh, so, is this sticky one? Like I do have kind of friends do have like my, my my socials and stuff, and they tell me when to upload, what to do on social media, kind of thing. Um, obviously, I ask my manager uh, what do I upload, kind of thing, and he kind of tells me you got to be consistent with it. I like how I'm consistent with my training, um, but yeah, I I just be myself, kind of thing. Like I'm I'm a, I'm a little bit of a joker. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've got like, I've got like a little character. I just be myself. To be fair, like, yeah. and I think that that's the best policy to have. Don't try being somebody that you're not. Because at the, in, in the end, you're going to get found out. Yeah. Just be somebody, who, just be who you are kind of thing. And, and people will fall in love with you for who you are, you know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. So, yeah. yeah, I will put all of Hamza's social media links in the description box below. Um, so you can just check them out and give them a follow as well. So going back to your, you said your mom prepares all your food, yeah. food for you. So your mom's your chef. Yeah. And who's your personal trainer you um, train with? So obviously I train with Anthony Manning uh, and he's my professional coach and then obviously I, with Anthony, he's a very open guy, he's a very honest guy and I kind of, when I approached him I said to him, listen, I want to work with my amateur coaches so I work with obviously Wad from Fearless Boxing Academy, I work with my amateur coach for the, per the, the person who I first started with uh, who was Siraj Udin. Um, I train with him as well and I train with uh, Gaff who's the owner of Fearless Boxing Academy and then uh, about a year ago I got my strength and conditioning coach on board uh, whose name's uh, Suzy, a very well-known coach and yeah so that's it man so all these coaches kind of coming together 
uh, supporting me kind of thing and I'd say it's a lot, of, a lot about loyalties with me like um, I really wanted the people who I started with to kind of come with me on the pro journey mm. and that was like a must must yeah. and that's why I kind of rejected a couple of offers to go to go to go train to uh, uh, to go train at pro elsewhere because I wanted my amateur coaches to be with me yeah 100 percent day ones day ones exactly my day ones yeah <laughs> So in terms of looking ahead in the next five years, where do you see yourself in five years in terms of your boxing career? Honestly, yeah, I'll be honest with you, like life can change at any moment. Like, so yeah, just before COVID, I stopped boxing. Um, I was kind of living that uni lifestyle kind of thing. I was like, you know, I had, I had, a, I had a little phase in my life where I didn't want to box no more. I didn't want to be known as a boxer. I would kind of made, made huge mistakes. Didn't, didn't go training, obviously just didn't, didn't live the boxing lifestyle and I was just like an average Joe kind of thing. And I used to always walk around the streets and, I, and, and people used to say to me, oh, how's boxing? Are you still training kind of thing? And I see a lot of kids nowadays, uh, people ask them, are you still boxing kind of thing? And they say, now nah, we've fell off kind of thing. And I didn't, in, in my case, I didn't want to kind of say like, okay, what if, I, what if I kept on boxing kind of thing? So I thought to myself one day, I woke up, I thought to myself, I'm good enough. So why don't I go back into it? Why don't I start again? Like I've still got the talent kind of thing. Mm. And I guess in life you make mistakes and obviously everybody's not perfect, but obviously it's about how you learn and what lessons you take from those mistakes. And I learned my lesson and Alhamdulillah I'm back in. And three years later, I won numerous, like in them three years, I won so many business titles, got to the national levels in the, in the elites kind of boxed 20 plus fights and just in those in just them three years beat some big names and signed professional so yeah. yeah so in five years i don't know where where it can take me but hopefully i'm saying I'll be a british contender a british title winner a world contender kind of thing yeah. because honestly i i have got that hunger it's about that hunger you know what i mean and yeah, yeah definitely yeah i could definitely see in your eyes especially when you're talking as well yeah you definitely got that hunger so watch out ladies and gentlemen in a few years It'd be worldwide name. Eh? It's true, and um, like it wasn't easy for me, kind of thing, to get back into boxing, kind of thing, because obviously from 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 what happened, from where I was, where my lifestyle was running down, it wasn't easy. But sometimes in life, the the easy thing isn't always the right thing to do. So I, I chose the hard thing to do: get back into training, get back into the gym, and it's the best decision I've made. Yeah. So definitely. just guys, just remember, man. You know, in life, you have choices. And the easy choice may not always be the right one. Absolutely, 100%. So going back to COVID, you said you stopped training. Yeah. How long did you stop training for? Yeah, so just before COVID, I stopped training for about seven, seven months. Stopped training. COVID hit. I kind of had an awakening. Like I'd say COVID was a blessing in disguise. I always say this. Yeah. And then I got in contact with, uh, with, with, with a mate of mine who was, who was a little kid, wanted to box and kind of uh, stuff. And he was one of my sponsors, obviously, Umair from Eminence. And we used to, like, obviously, all the gyms were closed kind of thing. So we used to go on the track. We used to run five miles a day, get some pad work in, go to uh, his, uh, his, his car unit, Eminence Supercar Hire, yeah? just get some pads in and stuff. And I just started training from there. And then uh, I was thinking to myself, like, like these guys have all got all these supercars kind of thing. And Mo from Eminence, he was kind of asking me all the time, how's your boxing going? How's your boxing going? How's your boxing going? And I'm thinking to myself, like this guy's got a, like, a, like, a, like a whole showroom of supercars. Mm. Why is he asking me about my boxing? Why is he asking me about boxing or how I'm doing and stuff like that? So I knew he saw something in me and I knew boxing was a big thing. If, if a guy that's got like, I don't know, like five Lamborghinis, six Lamborghinis, in, like right in front of his face, and is, is, uh, is asking me about boxing. So I thought to myself, you know what, I might as well stop boxing and come good at it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that kind of fueled my hunger again. And yeah, ever since then, I haven't stopped. Uh, I think literally in the past three years, I've only took like a week, like all together, like three weeks off. And yeah. Wow. So, so what do you do when you're away from boxing, <clears throat> training for fights, etc.? You know, like, so sometimes it does, get, it does get a lot for you, like kind of waking up, going gym, coming back, going gym again, going to sleep, waking up, going like, just imagine like that routine every day, every day. I'd say, you know, I just go on a little holiday, get my head cleared, come back or say I just, you know, just rest my body kind of thing. Just literally stay at home, rest my body, 
kind of just watch movies kind of thing, see friends, stay at home, and that's about it. That's that's like another way of you know getting my get my mm. mind off things and stuff. So yeah. Hundred percent. So in terms of there's many boxes out there um, from different divisions. Which one would you say motivated you to start boxing? Motivated me to start boxing. I don't know when. So like obviously when I was like nine years old. Uh, obviously, my older brother, he used to, uh, it was his birthday and my mum bought him a boxing bag and, and, and some gloves. And obviously, like, we used to always just mess about on the bags kind of thing. And we used to always kind of spar and stuff. And he used to give it back to me, I used to give it to him. And then we used to watch the TV and all the family used to come together. We used to watch Amir Khan, obviously. He was a, he obviously, he was the first British Pakistani to mm. kind of make it big. Um, so we used to watch him all the time. And I'd say he was a massive inspiration in a sense where, you know what, an ethnic minority um, and, and, uh, and uh, someone from an ethnic background can actually do it. Uh, obviously there was many greats, Prince Nassim, obviously he done it, he was from an ethnic minority. Uh, but obviously from a British Pakistani background, obviously I'm from a British Pakistani yeah. background, the fact that he did it kind of fueled it all in. And now you see a lot of, a lot of uh, British Pakistani lads coming through like Adam Azim, Hassan Azim, Hamza Shiraz, Abdul Khan kind of thing. So you see a lot of kids coming, co coming, through, coming through now. Yeah, 100%. Because they are doing some big things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, all the guys that you mentioned. So in terms of your dream opponent, regardless of how big or small they are, who is your dream opponent to fight in your division? To fight in my division? I'd say Tank Davis. Tank yeah, Davis. Javante yeah. Davis. I don't know, he's one of my favourite fighters and I would love to share the ring with him yeah. because I don't know man, I think he's elusive, kind of got the power punch kind of thing and I'd love to be in the ring with him even though I look up to him. So I'd say uh, Javante Davis, but even Arturo Gatti um, who fought Mickey Ward in, in, a, in a grueling fight. I don't know, I'd like to see, like obviously I know he's got heart. I want to see how big my heart is, 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 is um, how, how, how big my heart is against his. So, yeah, Arturo Gatti. Yeah. So hopefully, inshallah, in three, four years' time, you might actually be in the ring sparring with him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you say your ring name is Poster Boy. How did you come across? How did you get that name? Yeah, so it was a funny story, really. Um, so obviously, growing up and stuff, I was kind of the, the, the class clown in school, uh, the, cl the, gym class, uh, the gym clown in, in, in the gym, obviously. And then uh, one, of my, uh, my, one of my teammates, Hamza Udin, he used to always say, you're, you're a poster boy kind of thing. Even my coach, Raj Udin, he used to always say, you're a poster boy. Um, so obviously I went to university and I was a sports scholar for Aston University. So I went down and did, like, obviously did a photo shoot and stuff. And we had all these photo shoots and stuff. And I thought to myself, you know, like, there's nothing, nothing big about it kind of thing. And then obviously a couple of weeks down the line, I started being po posted on the Sport Aston page. And then there was like, a lot of posters in university and people that were taking pictures of uh, of my poster and they'd like send it to me kind of thing and then obviously they made leaflets and they kind of draw a moustache on me kind of thing saying oh look we're senior we're senior kind of thing uh, so the name just stuck from, from there man just basically having my face around at university uh, on the posters and yeah so the name poster boy just stuck yeah yeah and how do you deal with do you get people coming up to you on the street asking for your autograph in and around this area? I wouldn't say autograph, I'd say like uh, a lot of people do approach me kind of want to get to know me kind of thing, like how, how you doing, let's go out for food kind of thing. But I'd say I ain't got time, man. I ain't got time because honestly, like it's a very busy schedule. And, and obviously I understand that, you know, a lot of people when you're doing, when you're, when you're winning, when you're doing really, really good, a lot of people want to get to know you kind of thing. but. Mm. And obviously, in, like kind of myself, I wanna I wanna get out of there. I wanna be like, obviously be in the public eye. But because of the sport I'm in, like lo like boxing is a very lonely sport. So obviously, the sport I'm in, kind of thing, you have to kind of keep yourself to yourself. Go home, kind of thing. Don't go out socializing and stuff like that, because that's where you end up in trouble. And obviously, when I was at uni, kind of thing, I was kind of socializing and stuff, and I completely fell off boxing. Uh, so I kind of and, and, and like I said before. Uh, with with life lessons, I kind of thought to myself, you know what, I can't socialise. I've already learnt my lesson, and that's what life's all about: learning lessons and not making mm. them same mistakes. And that's what I've done. Hundred so, yeah. percent. So you say boxing is lonely. How do you deal with that in terms of mental health and everything like that? I'd say my coaches helped me a lot in that sense. Kind of having them coaches being with you in the corner, kind of thing, being with you at training, kind of having that one-to-one -one time with them. Like, I'd I'd say my circle is really small. 
it's only the gym guys kind of thing because they know the work I put in, I know the work that they put in and we kind of, kind of have, sim have, similar, have similar experiences I'd say mm. and have similar feelings so I'd say it's a lonely sport 100% but you know, it's easier to have that stable with you, easier to have them coaches with you that are, are going to support you through these lonely times. And obviously parents, man, parents were a big thing. Yeah, 100%, 100%. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. End of the podcast. Thank you to Hamza Postboy Ahmed for coming out. I hope you did like this podcast and do hit that subscribe button and look out for the ne next podcast. So thank you very much. Thank you. Here to take over, inshallah. Inshallah, you heard it first here on Entrepreneur Podcast Club.